You announced your return. Well, the ultimate Botchamania match. <laughs> Did you ask Mickey about this match though? I'm kinda scared too. <laughs> Top 50 greatest WWE women's wrestler. <laughs> I was like, oh. This producer lineup at Empower, you and Mickey, Jazz, and Medusa? When you just work together on a real honest level, you're gonna have more success. I just think it just gives ultimate credibility to this event. Welcome if you're entering the Valley, this is DS, and today we're here with the Impact Hall of Famer, the formal WWE Women's Champion, the formal Knockout Champion, and my favorite Korean sister, Gail Kim is here! Where's my soup dumplings? Those are the first time eating soup dumplings! I cannot believe it, right? Actually, when we posted it on Instagram, everyone's like, oh, your Asian card is revoked. <laughs> well, we have to talk about you announced your return well. to fight a troll. laughing the whole time. <laughs> yes, no. You come out of retirement and people are like, oh my god, how many times have you come out of retirement? A million times. Or, can you please come out of retirement for one more match? And I get they're all different people, but it's, uh, you know, <laughs> trolls. I like to get under their skin as they do under mine. <laughs> Gail versus a troll is my favorite thing to watch on Twitter. You know, once in a while you feel a little feisty. Depends on how you wake up that day. And But a lot of casual fans don't know that you work with the knockouts. You're the producers for Impact Knockouts. Great knockout action. And it's all because of you. It's not because of me. It's a team effort. <laughs> team effort. <laughs> I've been doing that since I was 10. Talent. So I knew I was going to retire at one point. It was when Jeff Jarrett was in charge, actually. Being a veteran in the locker room, you know, the girls that came in would start slowly asking me for my feedback as well, which I'm flattered that they even, you know, will respect my opinion and everything. And I'm so appreciative of that. And I just started taking on kind of that teaching role, I guess, or mentoring role. And I really loved it. And once I retired, or I knew I was going to retire, I thought to myself, man, I was afraid that I was going to miss the entering action. But this has ultimately given me such fulfillment. I'm, and I'm so invested in this division, obviously, being here from the beginning of when it started. I just truly care so much, and I want to see it be the best. I want to see the girls succeed and carry on that legacy. And I think that the girls right now are doing an amazing job. And I want to say that also Madison Rain just came back, so she's helping also. She produces some of the girls' matches as well. Really, it's ultimately a team effort within our management because we have the most amazing writers, creative team, and they really do such a great job at for example, let's take Alicia, for example, Alicia Edwards. She's been wrestling for a long time. She only really found her Lish character in the last couple of years because the writers were just so great at, you know, getting to know who you are as a true person and your personality and just bringing that out a hundred times fold. In most cases, not all, you are an extension of yourself on TV. Either that or you're gonna have a lot of fun being a heel and, you know, being the total opposite of what you are. So you will be doing producing for Mickey James's all women's pay-per-view NWA Empower. Yes, obviously really excited about this project. And, you know, there's a lot of women right now that have been trying to do these all women projects or shows or pay-per-views or whatever it may be. We're just trying to take strides forward in the industry and we are doing a great job. She already had kind of the green light going on this. So when she asked if I would be a part of it, I'm like, yeah, as long as Impact Wrestling is cool with it, of course, I always want to support the other women in this business. And I really think that we are stronger together and working together. I mean, same with men. It's the same thing. When you just work together on a real honest level, you're going to have more success. You know, look at me, Christy and Amy, when we were going for the kayfabe and we still are working on that, guys. You know, we're never going to give up on that. So <laughs> COVID kind of put a little break on that for a little bit. But really getting to work with all these great women in the past in the wrestling companies yes but also being able to work with Christy and Amy taught me so much you know just leaning on each other when everyone can feel down at sometimes or you know discouraged at times there's always like that one person is picking each other up 
and I think that's really important. This producer lineup at Empower with mm-hmm. you and Mickey, but also Jazz and yeah. Medusa, like yeah. the star lineup. What's happening there? Of course, you know, because I I never got to work with Medusa really. I mean, I don't think I have. No, yeah, I'm always like questioning how many, all these generations. Well, jazz, I only got to work uh, with as a talent, and then I was a producer for her too when she just did this last Impact run. I really did enjoy agenting the girls that I wrestled against because I felt like I really knew them very well, and yeah, it's just so fun and to be among amongst these girls who are so respected. I mean, I just think it just gives ultimate. Uh, credibility to this event. I'm excited. I'm excited to see who's going to be wrestling there, which matches I get to produce. I'm always keeping my eyes kind of and my ears peeled for, you know, those hot names and whoever's the up and coming talent on the indie scene. So we're always looking. So as a producer, what makes a good match? For me, personally. I mean, it ultimately always comes down to storytelling. Wrestling has really changed. It's become very athletic, faster. Um, People are doing crazier things. I don't mind all that. We should find a way to meet in the middle because ultimately the storytelling is what's going to get that match to be memorable. So a lot of wrestlers these days, I think, go for the pop, you know, of that moment. Like, oh my God, that move that, you know, and there's another huge move and they did this crazy thing, but you know, you don't want to do too much of that. I think you can build to those moments and they will make them more memorable. And that's ultimately what I do with um, any match I produce. If I feel like, say someone wants to go through a table, like in the beginning of the match, I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you doing this at the beginning? Then what are you going to do for the rest of the match to top it? You know what I mean? Your fans have seen it. They've reacted. Or, you know, you just went through that and they didn't even react because they saw five moves before that that were impressive that they couldn't even digest. It's also like you go for some big spots too with Taryn Terrell matches. Crazy spots. Yeah, but how many did I do? And where did I do them? (laughs) Storyline wise, it made sense. What I ultimately go for too, I mean, especially when, because I can't make other wrestlers do the moves that I'm thinking of. I like creativity. I like uniqueness. People who have a set, you know, set of moves, signature moves, but then, you know, you're going to have an interesting different transition or a different move in this match or depending on who your opponent is. I always change my style to fit my opponent. We all know that you had amazing matches after I mean, all the legendary matches, but shall we talk about a bad match? Oh, yeah. Okay, we can talk about bad matches. I'm up for this, yes. Especially now that you're working with Mickey. Yes. That match. Working for Miss <laughs> Did you ask Mickey about this match, though? That's what I want to know. I'm kind of scared to. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not afraid to ask me. So, yeah, that's our, like, probably the ultimate Botchamania match. <laughs> Explaining that match backwards. So those were the days when the girls were just getting their time cut. You know, it was a baby face versus baby face. So ultimately it's gonna go a little bit faster, you know, and we started off with a six minute match and it just kept on getting cut and cut and cut before, you know, it's a live show. And the girls were always cut first. So by the time we were supposed to go out there, they cut it to like three minutes. We obviously had, um, <laughs> <laughs> went a million miles per hour and so right at the very end I just said I I can't like I can't I couldn't I was blown up we were both blown up at that point um that I couldn't lift her for the win oh, deal. Can't block we just it. went anyways didn't go so called another finish and that didn't go either thought she had Gail Kim finished off there. Sometimes that happens. The Mickey's face in that match, though. I don't, I don't know. I'm like, where are the lines of kayfabe I'm telling right now, right? <laughs> but it was just like, okay. <laughs> okay. This is what I always said to people who asked us about that match. We are human. <laughs> and it's funny that the Simone Biles stuff is coming out right now with the Olympics. Right. And the whole thing is that they're saying we're human. You know, we all... We aren't perfect, but I will say one thing. We did make up for it later on in TNA and Impact. So we got to redeem ourselves. We had many matches after that one-on-one, and I am very proud of 
all our confrontations. And that one was just a learning experience on live TV. Let's quickly move away from this topic, but let's talk about what everyone's talking about lately. The Forbidden Door. We're seeing Kenny Omega come to Impact and take that title. But we want to see knockouts going against AEW's women's locker room. I mean, I want to see that. I would like to see that too. Mm. I think the fans would like to see that too. I'm not sure where Tony and Scott and everyone are thinking about that. But to be fair, even if we weren't going that far, Deanna has said that she's beat everyone, but she really hasn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she hasn't been through the knockouts locker rooms. She's won against everyone she's faced so far in a title match but there's still taylor wilde i'm honestly really interested to see tasha and diana go at it because i think tasha's going to do really well as a singles competitor and i do want to see a rematch of jordan and diana again because they killed it at slammiversary last year she's not done with the knockouts division so even if there wasn't a forbidden door that's ever going to open which i think there possibly could be I would like to see Deanna face a couple of the girls in the knockouts division still. So let's talk about the knockouts tag division for a little bit. Because yeah. I will say it is the strongest women's tag division in all the major promotion. But like you said, Kira yeah. just left. Do we see more tag teams coming up? What do you think? Yeah, definitely. I, <laughs> fans are a little impatient at times, so you got to give it some time. Because uh, Kira literally just left. So... Right. You know, just give us some time and you don't want to add too many girls all at once. I think we've done a really good job at keeping things pretty fresh and uh, we're always looking, of course, for more knockouts. And if anything, we're just growing in terms of how many segments the girls are doing, what the girls are involved with all the time. And listen, all the girls work. It's not like there's girls sitting in the back doing nothing. <laughs> it's always... Someone's involved with something. The catering room is empty because everyone's working. Exactly. And that's what I like to see. So Diana, since coming to Impact Wrestling, has been the biggest name in the pro wrestling industry. And Impact definitely give her that push that she needed. Yeah. Um, what do you feel looking at her journey? Especially because I feel like you would feel a lot. It's very similar road in terms of that. And when you feel like you have talent to give to a company, um, you know, you don't want to waste your time. You just don't want to wait. I, I know I felt that way. I just felt like, my gosh, even at, at the three year mark, which some people stay for two contracts and wait it out. I was just like, I can't wait. I just can't wait. I, I felt so antsy and unhappy and maybe my personality is different, but I just knew I had to get myself out of that situation. And hey, sometimes you got to take a big risk. It ultimately can pay off in a big way. Imagine if I stayed in WWE. I would probably have accomplished nothing except for uh, win that title on my debut, which I'm really grateful for. But at the same time, I wish I could have fought for it more too, built my way up to that moment. But like I said, at this point, I'm not going to, you know, I'm very grateful for that. So last time when Deanna and you had a little um, promo together, yes. Deanna kind of teased into maybe wanting to have a match with you. And I think she really wants it. No, it's just a natural fit for you and I to go one on one at Slam <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's come up a couple of times and oh. uh, and not just with Deanna. I think Deanna's probably the name I hear the most uh, about me coming out of retirement. Ultimately, it's their time now, the generation that's happening now. I had my time. There's no reason for me to come out of retirement, to be honest. Yes, sure, to have a great match with Deanna, but I'm very confident that there's other knockouts that can have great matches with Deanna. I had a perfect uh, closure to my career that not many people can say. I mean, perfect for me. There's not many wrestlers who get to close that door. So, you know, as the kind of a mother figure of Impact knockout division, we've been seeing a lot of cases where the Impact wrestlers would go to either AEW or WWE, kind of a flip side of Deanna Peraza's situation. Yeah. What yeah. What's your thought on that when that happens? I would never want them to feel, because a lot of them feel like, oh my God, I don't want to act like I don't want to stay or, you know, be in any way negative. And I always just say, hey, if you feel like you want to take that opportunity, you have to experience that for yourself or else you're always going to say, what if? You don't want to look back and have any regrets. You know, Taya's a great example. I mean, I told her that too, but you know, her husband was already there too, which gave her even more incentive, but 
she did Lucha Underground. She did AAA. She did Impact Wrestling. You know, sometimes you just want to go on to another company and see where you can go from there. And it's always, to me, when I went to WWE, came back, went to WWE, whatever it was, back and forth, it <laughs> almost gave me a, a refresher to my career every time. It's like, oh, something fresh and new is happening. Speaking of WWE, you were recently named one of the top 50 greatest WWE women's wrestler. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, I'm surprised they even acknowledged my existence. But, um, you know, it's always nice to be recognized, of course. I don't know. I really don't know what to say about it. I don't know what that was based on. And I'm always very flattered if I'm recognized for my hard work. Yes, it was a very uh, positive reaction. So now with NWA doing this all women's yeah. pay-per-view and ROH doing their women's tournament, but really if you think about it, Impact was the one that always did everything first. They're the frontier. So what yeah. is next for Impact's knockout division now? I would hope that we would do a knockouts, uh, knockdown pay-per-view again at some point because we are starting to get back out of the... I mean, I know COVID's kind of making a little comeback right now here, but I feel like we've already opened two crowds and things are getting a little bit better. So hopefully once we get into normal life, we can kind of go back to our normal schedule and routine. And we haven't done an all-women's pay-per-view for a long time now, you know? Right. So I always like that because I just always just loved seeing the new faces from the indie scene. And I know there's a bunch of girls I have my eyes on, you know, and Ooh. seeing how they progress. And there's a lot of girls I keep in touch with that always kind of send me updates. And I would love that chance to be able to work with them, even if they're not part of the company, to have that experience and just see what they got against our girls, right? And then everyone's curious. What's the latest with Kayfabe, with Christy Hemi and Amy Dumas, Lita? Still plugging away. Just because we don't talk about it, guys, doesn't mean it's not happening. Uh, sometimes things like this take time. Sometimes things like this take a little bit of a fight. <laughs> but we will never give up. That's all I gotta never. say. Never. I mean, me and Christy were just talking about that. We're like, we're just on FaceTime the other day and we said, we just, we just can't, we can't give up. It's just not in our DNA. We have to uh, keep plugging away, even if it happens when we're 60. You know? <laughs> we're going to make it happen. I mean, what are the odds that we did that whole tour a week before a shutdown? Yeah. Oh. I mean, even that day, uh, we're, yeah, we're in LA. We're on the first loop of the West Coast because we had, oh, we did New York. We were going to LA, uh, we were going to hit up Chicago and uh, I think one stop in Atlanta as well. So that kind of got stopped. I mean, remember that day we were supposed to go do an appearance and we literally decided that morning. Because at that point, we didn't really know too much about COVID. We just knew something was kind of spreading and people were confused. We weren't even wearing masks then at that point. So we had to cancel. We still have to make up that appearance, by the way. <laughs> yeah, that was insane. I, we just didn't expect COVID to happen right off the bat. Now that with the fans all coming back, they're getting their interest back in the wrestling and <laughs> Knockouts Division getting so much attention from all the women's wrestling fans. So you talked a little bit about Tasha Steeles, but tell us a couple more Knockouts that you're like, really, that you think people should be looking into. I am in interested to see where Tasha goes as an individual competitor because I mean her and Kira just had such great chemistry right off the bat I mean they really period. yeah period <laughs> period I just liked watching them do their entrance too so yeah I'm interested <laughs> to see where she goes uh, I think Jordan still has quite a future for her uh, right now she's on a tag I just wanted to work with her also I told her when she resigned I just want you know a couple more years with her to help her develop I think she's pretty much like one step away from you know sky's the limit for her I actually am curious to see uh, Chantel too because she's taken so much time off you know in between her last run and now and I mean, she hasn't missed a step and it's incredible because I feel like she took about 10 years off. I don't know how long, but right. it's a long time. The whole division is pretty solid to me. That's what I feel like. Everyone's got something to offer and everyone's got something different to offer. Everyone's just so reliable to me and great, but I want to see people pull off and away outside their box and just take big risks and just go for it. Ultimately, like we talked about, just making a lasting memory for the fans that's what everyone's goal should be you know 
to make their own legacy. This is what we were always joking around. <laughs> with Diana in the back with Mickey, I'm like, hey, don't you want to be part of the Legends Club? Come on. You know, you're going to be part of the Legends Club. We're just, you know, teasing her. <laughs> Become part of the club. So, Gail, I had such a good time being uh, at Impact Tapings in person. It was so fun. So they can go just like you did. Um, there's still limited tickets and VIP packages available. Uh, each session, so three consecutive days, three to six and seven to ten, uh, impactwrestling.com is where you can get the tickets. And guys, you never know who's going to show up or what's going to happen. And you are proof of that, right? I am. But we're, go we're going for it, you know, to entertain you guys. Thank you so much, Gail, for coming on to Ring the Bell. I will see you at St. Louis for Empower. Yeah! Oh my gosh, reunion time!